Hi everyone, so welcome to this uh, lecture. So today, the topic of today is reduced models to generate brain rhythms. And so the outline of the talk is as follows. First, I will start with an introduction because uh, that's an important uh, question, rhythms in the brain. And so I will give some, some context. So the idea here will be to, to set up the context. All right. Then we'll discuss some uh, toy models. We just consider uh, an ODE, two-dimensional ODE, periodic, and we add some noise. And we discuss the re relevance of uh, this model with respect to brain rhythms. Next, I will uh, introduce another ODE. Uh, so we will first start uh, by studying this ODE, and then we will uh, make some coefficients to be stochastic. Uh, then again, we will uh, confront that with some um, neuroscience experiments. And at the end, uh, I will uh, provide some uh, interesting mathematical questions. All right, so uh, let's start with the introduction. So, yes, there are rhythms in the brain. Neuroscientists and beyond now are able to make measurements of electrical activity uh, in the brain. That's the, the thing we are considering in, in this talk. And for example, uh, the sleep, uh, when people uh, sleep, um, they, they, for example, they, they, they have been able to uh, distinguish several uh, states in the sleep. Uh, and this corresponds to different frequencies of waves in the brain. And also, uh, during other uh, cognitive tasks, uh, they also record uh, rhythms and differences in, in the rhythm. So, uh, for example, delta waves, which generally ranges from 0.5 to 4 hertz are associated with deep, non-rapid eye movement sleep. Uh, theta waves, uh, you increase a little bit the frequency. It's related to drowsy, not so deep sleeping states. And gamma rhythm are implicated in information transfer and cognitive processes. I will talk a lot of gamma rhythms uh, today, but uh, another point is that uh, they observe that in different parts of the brain, uh, sometimes these rhythms synchronize. Um, there is a, a question about what's the meaning of these uh, frequencies and synchronization uh, what's the function of, of that? And there, there's a lot of uh, really important research going on to find what's the meaning of these rhythms. And, and is, is, is the brain talking with these rhythms? Uh, is, is it just, uh, I'm sorry, is this just a, a byproduct? So de definitely these rhythms have a meaning and so neuroscientists I, I have to dig on, on that and mathematics are here uh, to help. All right. So this second slide is just to emphasize again what I just said. Um, so brain waves have uh, specific frequencies 
and they are associated with mental states, some disorders. Uh, I, I, I could tell a lot about that, but uh, uh, I'm not going to. And uh, synchronization is also uh, an important question. So let's move on. Um, so as this introduction is is to, um, I need to. Um, so uh, all right. So as this uh, introduction is a. Uh, is to is to give context neuroscience context i i i just want to uh, present some tools that we can use to measure measure electrical signals uh, so uh, the, the first that i shows is the eeg this is the oldest among the three uh it goes back to the early uh, 90s and uh yeah you, you just put some electrodes in the wall skin, so it corresponds to the C here in the right side of the slide, and you you record these uh, signals about uh, 50 microvolts <coughs> of the amplitude. Uh, then you can uh, go at a more uh, smaller uh, recordings, and you can record the activity of a local neuronal population. And this is done with LFP, meaning local field potentials. <coughs> Next, now with microelectrodes, you, you, you can uh, measure uh, basically the electricity of uh, a single neuron. And uh, for example, th those are uh, typical uh, membrane potentials, right? And then you have action potentials um, with depolarization of the, the, the membrane. <coughs> so just uh, just for fun, um, this is the picture. Uh, this is from Wikipedia. This is a picture of the first human EEG recorded. So in 1924 by. Uh, Hans Berger is a German guy, a German researcher. And uh, you can see here uh, on the bottom, it's a, it's a periodic function with a frequency of 10 Hertz. So you can easily distinguish here that the first recording uh, published of the EEG has here uh, a frequency of 10 uh, Hertz. This is a modern uh, output of uh, the EG. You have some ports with beta, theta, uh, delta, alpha. This is eye blink. So when you, uh, you, 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 your eyes blink, you can see it on the EEG in this, in this electrons. So each year corresponds to an electron. And you have here the map. Uh, this is just to say that uh, to record to be able to analyze the output, you need an uh, amplifier. OK, so the big point for us uh, as mathematicians is that you have functions now. So each measurement is a function. And so you need uh, mathematics to analyze uh, this. So uh, not every uh, neuroscientist Scientists, but uh, a lot of scientists uh, use mathematical tools to uh, to produce some insights. So I think it's it's trivial to say that mathematics have a big role to play uh, in the upcoming research in in particular in neuroscience, as in physics, as in the other uh, other topics. So uh, just to give some examples, uh, a lot of a lot of uh, papers uh, when they, they took signals, so they used Fourier series, and uh, yeah, and also wavelengths. And so today, actually, we will uh, we will also use 
uh, Fourier transformations to grab uh, some uh, frequencies in our models. Okay, so um, next the so I, I'm going now to 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 start the transition to the the, the core of uh, what I want to talk uh, today, and uh, this transition is based on a on a paper uh, on a paper uh, from uh, so Logan Shariker, Robert Shapley, and Lei Song Young. These guys come from uh, New York University. So Lei Song Young is a is a renowned mathematician who uh, who uh, <coughs> started to be interested in applications in neuroscience ten years ago. Uh, Robert Shapley is a neuroscientist, <coughs> and Logan Shariker. Uh, so he did his PhD at New York University, a Quant Institute, and uh, so he is good at math and is able to to program uh, very very well. So. <coughs> And so the, the next few slides are based on their uh, paper. Uh, basically, they built a, a, <coughs> a network model with a elaborated a network model for the activity of the visual cortex, uh, V1. Uh, and uh, yeah, this will serve as a, as a, as a as a transition uh, to to present uh, the core uh, of um, of what I want to say today. So uh, uh, so I went to their paper and I I I, I, I basically took their uh, some of their introduction and they, they they provide a lot of articles and I I went through most most of it and uh, so. First, gamma band activity, so the, the signals with a frequency gamma between 30 and 90 hertz uh, is attracting a lot of interest from the neuroscience community. So those are examples of papers. Uh, the, what I see is that the, the, the tool used to record these reasons is often the local uh, field potential, so a macro electron. So you measure a local uh, electrical activity of local neuronal populations. So uh, there are some papers, it's known, that um, in V1, when uh, it's not stimulated, when the, the activity is just what we call background, uh, the LFP fluctuations when you compute the Fourier transform, I will give more insights about that, uh, has a shape of, of a, a, a inverse law, right? But when you, you put a stimulus, um, then the V1 starts to react, a visual stimulus, the, 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 the cortex sta starts to react, and then you see a bump, a bump in some frequency, and this is gamma, right? Okay, this is a known factor, so here are some references if you want to dig it. Uh, what's the point for today is that uh, this gamma band activity is not always, so it goes back and forth, so you see the gamma frequency, but not all the time. So that's what we call bursts of activity. It's well known in mathematical neuroscience. You have some uh, frequency, but then it stops. There are quiescent periods. Uh, it can be graded, meaning that the power, the, the amplitude of the, the signal in the frequency domain uh, can be uh, graded. All right? And, uh, the sharpness, the base of the, 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 the peak in the frequency can be sharpened or, or broadened. Okay. <coughs> so, there are, uh, yeah, there are well-known experiments, uh, maybe, so if you come more from math, 
I can tell you that when you, you saw you, you you project an, an image uh, to your brain with shapes, so your your brain makes uh, computation <coughs> related with the orientation of the shape. So your brain is able to compute the angle, and you see that your neurons uh, synchronize by columns in, 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 in the cortex associated with the angle of the, the, uh, the shapes that you present. So this is quite uh, very interesting because the brain, uh, it does computation and he, for example, it takes your the, 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 the degrees of the orientation. So a shape like that, uh, some so we, if your shape is like that, uh, it's not the same if your shape is like that. And you can see in the active in neural activity in in the, in, in, in V one. So you can also um, see difference in construct or the size of visual uh, stimuli. Okay, so um, okay now we we are moving to the. We, we end the, the introduction, which was intended to give you some some ideas about neuroscience, and uh, make the transition. So now today we are interested in low uh, low dimensional models. So usually uh, a very used uh, tool to simulate neuronal activity is networks, right? But today <coughs> we are going to consider our low dimensional models. And we want to generate, uh, so the, the signals in the brain, they have oscillations, but they are irregular. And uh, so we will see that the, the spectrum that it's observed uh, is called brand, broadband gamma, meaning that it's not uh, very uh, sharp, it's, it's more broad. And the frequency goes back and forth. And then the bits, the bits like in, in, in music, uh, are not always the same, meaning that the amplitude of the signal is some, some, sometimes higher, uh, sometimes lower, it degrades from time to time, and before uh, the resumption of the oscillatory behavior. So, uh, next, the discussion that uh, uh, to follow is based on a recent paper uh, with uh, Lai Song Young, and uh, it's it's uh, it's being to appear uh, shortly. So let's start uh, with uh, now we are going uh, to start with basic mathematics for you for your level. Uh, but let, let's start, and uh, yeah, so we start with uh, this equation, and uh, so here the equation is written, is written, you have here uh, the result, so basically this equation uh, asymptotically evolves periodically as this function which is uh, here on the bottom of the slide. So uh, to be interactive and for you to, to grab something, I prefer that you do this uh, simple exercise, uh, so try to prove that, right? So uh, we will stop for a few minutes to let you uh, think uh, about that and uh, prove, prove that, write a proof of that. Um, all right, so we are now going to, to solve this exercise. So um, this is the equation. Um, so let's put the, that here. And uh, okay, so uh, I'm going to put that on the complex plane. Uh, I like to do like that. So 
you just add the first and the second equation and the, you multiply by the complex number i in the front of the second equation so you get x plus i y uh, the derivative of that equals so x plus i y sorry yep. in the second equation we, we we need y yes yes that's right yeah, yeah. thank you thank you and uh, so plus i so you you will get plus i x um, plus i y and then minus 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 really short minus so I, I will put the r because just after i will work with r and x plus i y right uh, all right so okay and uh so what i get is that um let's so now i write it as r i theta prime equals r p i uh, theta minus minus no plus e r theta minus r cube e e theta uh, so if I, I take the derivative of that uh, I will get uh, r prime uh, e e theta plus e r uh, a e e theta theta prime equals uh, here is the same and so now if I if I if I took the real and the so first I can sorry I can divide by um, I can here uh, divide by by e e theta so I get r prime plus e r theta prime equals r plus e r minus r to the third so now i can identify here the complex part and uh, the real part let's put it in, in green uh, and so uh, what i get is that theta prime equals one and r prime r prime equals r minus r to the third so i get r sorry let's go back to that i got here r prime equals r minus r to the third and theta prime equals one um, okay so uh, so this is uh, for example r times r minus r square and so if you look at this uh, differential equation at the top uh, if you start with a positive number it has no choice you can you can prove that uh, it, it will converge to one while the, the, the so we get from that that uh, when t goes to infinity r of t goes to one if so i start with a positive number r and uh, theta t equals uh, theta zero your initial initial uh, angle plus plus t all right okay and so that solves the uh, the, the exercise all right so Let's go back uh, to our uh, equation. Okay, so uh, what's uh, interesting is that um, so let's assume now we work with uh, milliseconds.
the unit is milliseconds. So asymptotically, you have a periodic solution of uh, two pi. So mostly it's uh, yeah six six point two six point three. So if you if you slow down with a coefficient here in both equations by your uh, by by three. Uh, you roughly get 19, so let's say 20 milliseconds, and this gives you around 50 hertz, right? And this is gamma. This is in the gamma range, so uh, it's good to to test uh, to have numbers because in neuroscience uh, numbers are are, are important. Um, okay, so now we had some noise, so. Uh, this is a classical stochastic differential equation. Um, so we have uh, we had a Brownian motion. Uh, we have here uh, a white noise, right? And now uh, let's go back. So we run we run simulations with that, and we try to see uh, what's the relevance with neuroscience. Because why? Because uh, people do that. They they they, they took some periodic thing and they add noise. So basically here, this is the essence of uh, what uh, we do sometimes. And we are not here to, to say it's not worth. Uh, this is interesting, but uh, we, we try to, to dig a little bit more uh, to see what's the relevance of, of that. So, um, so in the right part, uh, this is uh, <coughs> a simulation from conductances G -E -G -I, uh, in, in, in this paper, and this is this is a, 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 on the bottom. This is a, a recorded uh, voltage in in, in macaque, the visual cortex of, of a macaque. So, the first line, uh, it's too regular, right? You see that the amplitude is always the same. The signal never degenerates. So uh, yeah, it, it, it's not good, right? So if you want to to resemble signals, it's not good. Uh, this one is a little bit better, but still, uh, it, it's not good. It never degenerates. Uh, yeah, and at this point, uh, yeah, that that's not bad. That's not bad. Uh, but uh, the rhythm doesn't go uh, back and forth, for example. Uh, and uh, well, you know, it, it's not so, it doesn't resemble, for example, the, these things. <coughs> and here, uh, yeah, it's too much. It's too much and uh, you, you start losing, uh, you, start, you start losing the, uh, you start losing something. Um, okay, so next. Uh, we have to introduce what's the tool, uh, what's the algorithm to compute um, the frequencies. And that's what people do in neuroscience. So what they do, they, they, they compute the, the Fourier series of, uh, on, the, on the period of time. So this time has to be relevant. If not, you lose, you, you don't see things, right? This is uh, important. So for example, for gamma, 200, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's acceptable, it's, it's good, it gives good, good results. And then to obtain those signals, uh, you, you, you make a, a moving window, and so you compute the, the, the Fourier uh, coefficients on these moving windows, and then uh, you took the, the, the average value, the mean value. And so what you look at is uh, this, the, the the, the, the square of the, the module, the square, square, square module of, uh, of that, all right? And uh, so what we expect in the bumps, we will see that, so this is too, too sharp, right? It's not realistic. Uh, this is not bad. And uh, this is too, too, too broad band, okay? Uh, you start to lose the rhythm. You start to lose the beat. Uh, okay, so, but uh, there's a problem with the, the previous model. There's a, there's a trick 
we are like cheating because what? Uh, if I want to condemn this 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 kind of approach, uh, I will I will use I will use that. But this is a problem because here the derivative is always one. So when you even when you 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 move around the circle with the, with your stochastics here, it's, it's like the derivative is, is still is too much is too close of one, right? So there's no shear. It's called the shear. The shear is that when you you use the, your random, you have to act more on the angular speed. And so to solve this problem, we can uh, consider here. Uh, we will going to add. Uh, this uh, this term, all right. So again, to be interactive, I let you uh, and stop here. And five minutes to now do the same job, and uh, yeah, see that you arrive at this equation. So yes, I propose you to de do this short uh, computation. All right, so see you in, in, in a few minutes. So, all right, let's let's do that. So again, we do the the thing, the same thing. So, um, I took the first equation, then I add i times the second equation. So let's write it z. So z prime, z prime stands for x plus i y, uh, and then I get uh, z. So here I will get plus, so this is uh, the module of z square, uh, and then e, and then z, right? And uh, I'm almost done, um, and it remains to do minus z square uh, z. So again, if I do the, 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 the same thing as before, uh, I will get I will get uh, r, r prime e, e theta plus r i e, e theta theta prime equals r e, e theta plus r square e r e theta minus minus r to the third e, e theta. So yeah, I can just uh, simplify all these things and uh, yeah, what I get at the end is that r prime, again, it's the same, right? R, R prime, uh, you can see it, uh, the real part, the real part is that here on the left hand side and on the right hand side is this one and this one, so uh, I get, yeah, okay, yes, yeah, okay, good. R prime equals, it's the same, R minus R to the square, and now the, um, the theta prime here uh, can just drop this thing, this thing with um, uh, this thing, right? So, so I identify the complex part, the, the imaginary part, and I, I then I obtain that. Uh, and I forgot the alpha here, sorry, there's an alpha here. So finally I get uh, that theta prime equals r and square and alpha, right? And so now uh, I have, uh, so asymptotically it's the same, the, the solution goes because r, if I start with a positive r, when t goes to infinity it converges to one, but now I have some shear because the angular speed depends on the radius. All right. Sorry? Yes? But uh, I see in this first system, the term, uh, the, the last term, mu b1t, 
I don't see her. Which 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 one? The last term in the in the previous uh, system. The term with the uh, me, me b one t, me b two. Yeah, no, no, no. We are considering the deterministic part. Ah, okay. okay. Yeah, we don't consider the stochastic part. This is just to give an insight, because the things are changing. So just by uh, considering the deterministic part, you can see that you change something here. So meaning that. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. It's okay. Okay. All right, so now, uh, still, so asymptotically, it, it doesn't change uh, so much, but in fact, it will change because now, uh, yeah, so you, 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 change the, you change the speed where you're, when, when you are not in the limit cycle, even for the deterministic part. So let's, let's see what the numerical simulations will give. Uh, yeah, so you you, you get uh, more uh, more irregular uh, behavior. Okay, and, and it, it starts so people from neuroscience start to say, yeah, that's not bad, that's not bad. Okay, um, all right, but what we you did is you add you added another you added another parameter to play with, right? So another thing to, to, to play is to, to, to play with the dissymmetry between the two coefficients, mu x and mu y. So you, you, you introduce one way, one more parameter to change, in fact, OK? Uh, so we conclude that uh, limit cycles plus noise with one or two parameters uh, may reproduce some aspects of the brain, depends what you want to focus on. but uh, they are limited to reproduce some other things. So now we are uh, presenting a two-dimensional ODE uh, in which we will vary uh, three, uh, three, three, three parameters. And uh, these three parameters, uh, because we are not just considering a, a periodic solution, will allow to control frequencies, amplitudes, and degree of degeneracy. Uh, so let's move on. So uh, what's the inspiration of that uh, really is when you look at these networks. So there's no i here or, or j, but uh, so this is, why, this is one equation in the, in the network. So the equation is simple here. Here it's, it represents a, a membrane potential. And it goes to zero, C is a positive number, it goes to zero if, if you don't uh, consider uh, these terms uh, with the GE and GI. Now, the GE, the VE is something greater than one, while the VI is something negative. So when GE and GI are, are positive uh, numbers, take positive values, this has the effect of uh, pushing up the potential, while this one has the effect of pushing down uh, the, um, the potential. And this is very relevant in neuroscience because it is known that our brain has local populations of excitatory and inhibitory neurons. And so here the term here represents the excitatory contribution, while the, the far right uh, here term represents the um, inhibitory contribution. And now how does it work? The GE also uh, goes to zero, but now you add two things. You may have, so this is a general principle. Uh, after that, you can make variations on that. But so you receive, for example, GRAX or other uh, functions uh, more realistic uh, physiologically, but let's say we consider GRAX. So uh, when when uh, uh, some stochastic process 
uh, arrives, let's say a Poisson process typically, you have you have a jump of GE with an amplitude here of S G1, right? Uh, this is just a, a parameter. It's not a power, it's just a parameter, just a, 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 a index, right? So this is a stochastic uh, process and this is meant to represent some drive. So you can you can have also one for the, the G, GI contribution or not. Uh, and then you have you do have the the presynaptic neurons. So things work like that in the brain. Your your neuron is connected to other neurons, and uh, when some of the presynaptic uh, neurons uh, kicks, when it has a, an action potential, then uh, uh, this neuron see see it. It sees it sees it, all right? And so this, those are contributions for the network. So those, those, those contributions are positive. So basically, the more uh, kicks you receive here, the more GE uh, have jumps, and the more this conductance increases. And the same here, all right? And now what you see, those are uh, unpublished uh, numerical simulations of, of, of this kind of network. And what you can see is in green is the GI and in blue in, in purple the GE. And well, th those are uh, kind of typical uh, outputs, uh, time series for, for those. So you can easily see that uh, in some regimes they are correlated. Right, so you cannot say that that's not correlated. So they are correlated. Right, so that's a feature also. Uh, if you want to, to if you're interested on in, uh, networks of E and I neurons, if you want to represent GE and GI in some in some uh, regimes, they have to be correlated. Right, and that's one of the inspiration for the uh, OGE model that I'm going to present here. It, it, it so the, the dynamics have somewhat to uh, ha have this kind of properties, and uh, that's not a thing that uh, came just uh, for fun. Uh, there's a lot of so this is the scholarpedia here, and so there are uh, 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 this picture is a mix with a model and recordings. Um, and so they, 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 they were able to estimate the GE and GI, as you can see, right, it's close, right? When you see the network, uh, this is close to that, right? Okay, um, this one I already uh, showed uh, it to you. Uh, it, comes, it, it, it comes from this paper here. Okay, but they are correlated. The GE and GI are correlated. And they have, in this regime, typical courses. Okay, now uh, let's consider uh, this, this system. Uh, we are uh, going to, to spend some time on it. The idea is, uh, yeah, uh, we want to grab something from that. So we are going to analyze it and, uh, and then uh, discuss the, the relevance in uh, modeling purpose. So here you can see that the values of A1, so A1 is negative but very small, uh, B is, uh, is 0.1, uh, sorry, A2, A1 is, is, is very small and, and negative, A2 is positive but uh, 0.1, B you, is near 12 and C is very, very small, okay? <coughs> and we, we will discuss the value of K epsilon gap. Okay, you can prove this theorem. I try to prove uh, this theorem that every solution that starts in, in the positive quadrant will remain in there, and furthermore, uh, it will be absorbed by some set. So asymptotically, every solution of this equation lies in a bounded absorbing set. So try try to prove to prove this theorem.
Uh, so now let's look at this um, at this at this system. So first of all, uh, we can have a look at the equations with either, either u equals zero or v equals zero. So uh, let's start with if u equals zero. Let's start with if u equals zero. Uh, so u remains u remains zero because of the first equation, and then the second equation becomes v prime, or let's say prime v prime equals v times minus v plus c. So of course, if v equals zero, then uh, this is a stationary point. Uh, if v is is positive. Then I can see, you see, if you took, if you choose a V to be greater than C, uh, then the derivative will be negative. While if you choose a V to be less, less than C, the derivative will be positive. So uh, in this case, uh, you will have uh, uh, that as T goes to infinity, uh, V of T equals C. Right? But uh, what's important here uh, for the purpose of proving the theorem is that you have solutions lying on the u equals uh, zero axis. Now, <coughs> if I do the same uh, for now, if I choose v equals zero, uh, this is also a solution. And what I obtain from the equation is uh, is that um, u prime, so our epsilon u prime equals u times minus k u minus a1 times u minus a2. And there is no more minus v because uh, because v equals zero. So if I look at this e this equation, uh, uh, if I look at uh, at this function, which later I I, I will call it uh, f f of u actually, uh, yeah. So it has uh, this this shape, right? So here, because u is positive, I assume u positive. So here. Uh, so the derivative in this case is positive, and in this case is negative. So again, so this is a1, this is a2, so again, when t goes to infinity, you have that ut equals a2. But for, for our purpose, what's important there is that you have also solutions that lie all along the v equals zero axis. So uh, because uh, solutions cannot intersect, you have here uh, solutions going like that. A1 is negative, A2 is positive. You have solutions going like that. So if you start uh, with an initial condition here, it can never cross here because here is uh, is there is a solution, and by uniqueness of the solution of the Cauchy theorem. You cannot escape. So, any solution starting in the upper quadrant stays in the upper quadrant. And next, uh, there's more like that. Uh, we are going to prove that th there is some some region here uh, in which, uh, if you start in the solution, he it the, the trajectory has to enter here. So to do that, uh, we are computing. Uh, this uh, derivative, so I'm looking at uh, this function, and I take the derivative. So it's, it's quite usual, you get 2 epsilon u, u prime plus v, v prime. And this is equal to so let's do uh, the computation. Maybe let's let's uh, so it's two epsilon. Uh, so u uh, 
and uh, u prime I recall that this is equal to u u times k u minus i a one please do v v prime yeah thank you thank you that's right uh, yeah and then uh, there's a minus here and minus v uh, and so minus v u because I put the u here let's put the no okay I can do that okay so this is two epsilon nu u prime plus 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 two v v prime and so so v square and this is uh, b u plus c minus v so let let's look let's look at that so uh, so here the dominant coefficient in u will be uh, u to the fourth right with a minus k uh, then you, you you will have several terms with u to the third and uh, you have you have a, a coupling term here which which will appear which which will be uh, here this term this term and this term my point is, that I will summarize like that, uh, the u square minus u square will dominate for the, the polynomial in u, and for the v we will see, so uh, um, so what I saw, so I'm, I'm going to write, so let's write some details. Um, so I, I, I did the computation here, so this uh, is equal to, uh, two epsilon and then you have minus k u to the fourth plus a1 plus a2 u to the third uh, minus a1 a2 u square minus v u square and then plus two and minus v to the third plus b u v2 plus c v uh, square. So uh, uh, the only terms which may cause some trouble are uh, the, 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 the cross terms when you have u and v. Uh, so, but uh, because uh, the other terms here, this will dominate and this will dominate uh, so, uh, okay, so I, I, I will deal with that, that's not a problem, but uh, I need to focus on those terms and to get rid of these terms, what I'm going to do is to use uh, the Young inequality, meaning uv is less, for positive numbers, is less than up divided by p plus vq divided by q, where 1 divided by p plus 1 divided by q equals 1. All right, and uh, so if I do that, so here I, I just apply that for this term, I, I will just apply with, with uh, p equals q equals 2. So I have that v u square is less than um, 1 and a half v square plus u4 divided by 2 and I can put some small number let's call it uh, whatever you want delta if I put uh, a, a small delta here and I divide it by delta here uh, then I, I, I will get um, uh, delta square here and uh, here I, I will get also delta square uh, so I, I can choose. So if I if I choose, for example, uh, such that de delta square divided by two equals uh, plus k divided by two, I can absorb this term in this one and still keep this negative term, right? 
And then uh, the other term is this, and you can check that. You can check that. Uh, so I, I, I will apply. I want to obtain u to the third, all right? So if I want u to the third, uh, I want to say that uh, uv square is less than u to the third divided by three. So I choose u. I choose p equals three. And so if I want one divided by three plus something divided by uh, uh, <coughs> I want that, right? So. Uh, this is 1 divided by q, meaning that q is 3 divided by 2. So uh, I will get v third uh, divided by uh, by q. So, uh, all right. Okay, again, I can put some number here such that this positive number will be absorbed by that. So at the end of the day, uh, I'm going a little bit fast, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, what you have is that uh, you can prove that, you, you, you can prove that uh, d divided by dt of epsilon u square plus v square uh, is less than some constant, negative, so positive constant with a minus epsilon u square plus v square. Why? Because you have these terms, you have some constant here, let's call it k prime u force plus some lower polynomial and minus uh, some other constant here, v to the third, and, and, and you can find the constant here such that uh, this inequality holds. And once you have that, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's finished. And sorry, I forgot some another constant here. And when, once you have that, you can just write that. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of classical. You know, I, I've already done that with you. Uh, so if you have some uh, g prime equals, uh, let's say, minus g plus a constant. Uh, so you, you will you will multiply by uh, exponential t g prime here and exponential t k, and 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 so you 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 can prove with that. You, you do the computation, you integrate, and uh, you can prove that g of t equals exponential minus t g zero plus, uh, and you will have a, a, a number here, so some constant and some exponential. But at the end of the day, you can prove, yes, uh, the trajectories uh, will enter a bounded set, an absolute bounded uh, set. All right? So I, 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 I let you as, a, as an exercise to finish uh, uh, those details. All right. All right. So let's go back. Uh, okay. So now uh, we know that uh, we have uh, an absorbing bounded set. We have the theorem. Okay, uh, what are the fixed points? Uh, what are the fixed points? So this is a typical picture for k equals 60, uh, epsilon 0.1, and gamma is 1. So this analysis is, 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 is done with gamma equals 1 because by a change of time, you can always have the same trajectories. And, and it, it's, you don't lose any generality by choosing uh, gamma equals one. So these three uh, stationary points, we have already uh, deal, deal with that. And this is a typical, uh, typical, 
drawing of the solution. So in green, you have this function here. I call it F already. In blue, uh, you can call it G. It's V equals BU plus C. So this is typical. So uh, yeah, geometrically, you, you, you can see, you can prove that uh, there, we, th there are, in the positive quadrant, there are these uh, fixed points we already uh, talk, de dealt with, with that, these three fixed points. And there's another one, which is writing V equals F of U and V equals B U. So it's at the intersection of this function F, F being minus K U minus A1 times U minus A2, and G being B U plus C. All right. So with that in mind, uh, uh, we could uh, proceed to, to a classical uh, local stability analysis. And you can look at the, the also uh, the, the new clients. Uh, so you can see that below this green, uh, this green curve, the derivative of u is positive, while when you are uh, greater than this, this green curve, the derivative of u is negative. And the same thing for <coughs> for for uh, for the derivative in v. Uh, you can see that if v is below this blue line, the derivative in blue is, is the derivative in v is positive, while when v is greater is, is is on top of that, then the derivative in v is negative. Uh, so this gives you a lot of uh, information, a lot of information, and uh, so this is an exercise, but maybe now the time is running, so uh, yeah, so I'll let you, as an exercise, to prove this proposition one, um, I, I'm, I'm going forward now, but uh, yeah, this is an exercise to do, and since now, uh, you can you can prove that you can prove that in the regime that we consider here, you have that this quality, the determinant of the, the Jacobian at u star v star, will be always uh, positive for, for the, the, the regime considered considered here. Um, let let me give you just one uh, indication. Um, uh, let's, I can maybe draw here, uh, just here, um, just, just, yeah, so what I wanted to share uh, here in the blackboard is that the parameters that we choose are such that we are always within a configuration that's that that looks like that, meaning that uh, the the parameters uh, the the parameter that that we that we choose um, yeah uh, are are such that the u star v star always uh, is in, in in a range like that. All right, okay, and so this is important to prove proposition one. In fact, uh, so. Uh, you, you can it's uh, you can for, for proving that the determinant of j star is always positive uh, it's because the, the parameters we constrain uh, them to be uh, in such a configuration right and, uh, and okay so so and, and so that, that's what I wanted to to, to share uh, with you in in the blackboard. All right now, so let's let's uh, let's continue with that. Uh, okay, so there's uh, there's this uh, hop uh, bifurcation. You, you can you can construct a line. You can construct uh, a, a line. There's a function uh, that puts together the k and the epsilon for 
I repeat gamma equals to one. All right. Um, you have a C, you have uh, also, sorry, by application of the proletariat bedding set theorem, that when epsilon is less than this value, then uh, you will have a limit cycle. And there are some papers uh, that uh, prove that the, the paper is unique. It's always a, a job to, to prove that. Uh, so we didn't do that in this work, but th there's a paper on that. Okay. So those are examples. So this is the this is the line in black here that uh, gives uh, epsilon as a function of k. When uh, so here it's the up bifurcation uh, uh, curve, right? And some examples. You so you are at k equals sixty. So sixty is here, and you start with epsilon equals. Uh, 0.4, 4 is here, so you have a sink, uh, you have a sink. And when you decrease epsilon, then you will have a limit cycle. Uh, so varying epsilon, for epsilon uh, very small, uh, you have the slow fast analysis and uh, you can, uh, yeah, you can prove that uh, your trajectory is like that and this is illustrated here. And as you increase epsilon, uh, you, you have this kind of uh, of uh, of behavior. So, yeah, you go from uh, when you increase epsilon, you go from a limit cycle towards a, a stationary point. Actually, um, epsilon very small or very high, it's not so relevant in uh, in, uh, in science context, but it explains you a lot of things. So for epsilon very small, you see that you have a limit cycle. While for epsilon very large, you can use also slow fast dynamics to see that your, uh, your, uh, your stationary point will be attractive. Okay, now uh, what's going on with K? So roughly speaking, in the range of parameters shows, uh, when you increase k, you basically increase the amplitude of, the, of your limit cycle. All right, so from, from, from that, what we, what we can conclude for, for, from that is that uh, increasing epsilon for k fixed change the uh, dynamical region from the limit cycle. Uh, to a natural chief fixed point. K controls the size of the excursion in UV. And uh, so when you fix the epsilon gamma, the shape of trajectories, the trajectories doesn't change. However, what is changing is the frequency. So when you keep, when you keep epsilon gamma, the product epsilon gamma as a constant and you increase gamma or decrease epsilon, you increase the frequency. You increase the speed, so you increase this, the frequency. So now we are allowing uh, gamma, epsilon, and k to be updated at some each 0.1 milliseconds, uh, you, you change it. So it's kind of a mark of chain uh, when uh, at each step, uh, you, you pick up uh, um, some value in, 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 some, in some bounded range, right? According to these equations, all right? So the UE, the UI one, the UI are independent uh, random variables, uh, uniformly distributed on minus one one, but uh, of course uh, the, 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 the value of K, for example, at, the, at times I plus one depends on the value of I at times K. Only, only, right? Okay, so what's the relevance in the neuroscience context? So this is the output of one of, of, uh, of uh, UV. So V is uh, in green, U in purple, and uh, 
in, in dashed purple, you have a 3.5 U. And you can see that V and uh, 3.5 U are very close. And this is something observed, something that don't learn, people from neuroscience say, that usually the GI conductance is three to four times the GE conductance. And we can, we can work about that with this, uh, with this model. You have this correlation between U and V, which stands for the GE and GI. So this model is able to reproduce some features that are <coughs> observed in neuroscience context. Also, you see that the rhythm comes back and forth. So this is also observed. You can see also in the EEG at the beginning, sometimes you have some rhythm, then it disappears, then it comes back. You can't have that. You cannot have that in the, in the limit cycle plus noise. All right, so uh, um, I'm, I'm going to, to move on uh, with some other things. Now, we, we, we took some uh, experiments, some experimental papers. So, at the left, you have a, a monkey, which is who is uh, awake. And another one, which is who is anesthetized, it's, it's, it's sleeping. And what you can see after the, the initial uh, bump, is that the power, so you, you have both both gamma frequencies, but the gamma in the right, it's uh, around 40, while in the left, it, 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 it's at 60. So those are recordings, and then they, they do the PSD. Okay, so you have a, a decrease, both in the value of the, the peak, the frequency peak, who goes from uh, 60, 70 to around 40, and also in the power. So it, the range, the power, is more important here. It, it stays on the yellow green, right? You, you can see also here, okay? Here it's one, while here it's 0.6, okay? And so uh, with our model, you can do that. You can do that because basically the K, with the K, you can uh, lower the amplitude of the, the power of the, of the, the energy kind of in the, in the output and also you go from 60 here in frequency to uh, 50. So you go to 70 to 50. So this is by playing <coughs> with the allowed range. Okay, and here is the analog of, uh, of so AB is, uh, is represented here in, in D. And yeah, you have some analog results. So with this model, you can, you can do uh, things like that. Uh, those are other outputs. So here it's the contrast. So it, it has been observed that when you increase the, the contrast, what's going on? So here you have the, the values of contrast here. And here, for example, look at this peak here. So this peak here corresponds to a frequency of, <coughs> of around 40, around 40, so, okay? So the maxim, the max power is obtained here for 40, all right? And uh, here, um, for example, here, the minimal uh, power here is obtained for, let's say, 30, right? And so here, you have the, the, the same thing. You have that uh, around 40 here, you have the maximum power, and here, uh, moving the, the range of parameters, you have your, your, um, your frequency peak, the max here uh, is around 30. So this is, again, analogous. And <coughs> again, this is another example, sorry. Uh, when, you, when you repeat some stimulus, it has been observed that you have an increase in the uh, gamma power for a frequency peak around uh, 60. And you can also uh, reproduce that by playing with the range of parameters, all right? So uh, what's the conclusion is that? Is that um, with comparison, so because some, some, sometimes you just want periodic to slow, it gives some results, it gives some irregularity, but if you want to be more uh, precise, 
uh, you, you have to take into account what things your model controls <coughs> some of the characteristics. And that's what, 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 what was the purpose, that was the purpose of, uh, of this model. All right, uh, so an interesting um, feature, mathematical feature, is what? Uh, is the slow fast analysis. So uh, I, I bring you the question. So, so listen, listen carefully. So, uh, because epsilon is small, uh, again, choose gamma equal equals choose it gamma to be one. Since epsilon is very small, uh, when when the derivative is not around the green or or in the u equals zero, uh, then the derivative with respect to u is is is, more, is, is larger, much more larger than the derivative of v, meaning that you have these straight lines, right? So <coughs> this is well done in, in slow fast analysis. Uh, we will do a, a, spe a specific uh, talk on that. Uh, but you, you you have a, a manifold, and for example, starting d, you follow the 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 the, the curve v equals f, f of u until you reach this point a, which corresponds to the to the max here on the green curve, and then you, you jump very fast to this part of the attractive manifold, and then you you have no choice you because you can prove that you have to follow here. The question is. Now you can see that when you cross the, the, the green part, your u becomes positive. So here, my derivative with respect to u is positive. But since u equals zero, uh, it stays here. The, the, the question is why do I exit this manifold at the y coordinate c, right? This is a question. So you have a relationship between your entry value here at B and your, 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 your exit value at C. So when this A, B, C, D are determined, your limit cycle is at the distance O epsilon of uh, the, the, this, uh, this gamma uh, prime. Okay, and uh, you, you can prove uh, uh, this theorem it, it gives so the notations are it, it, it's a entry exit relationship which characterize the y coordinate of the exit point C. Okay, so this is more involved uh, that uh, the other results. Uh, this needs some some computations, but you can do it also. Uh, but yeah, it's a more deeper it's more deep math. To, to, to understand what's going on there. Uh, okay, so th there's a lot of things that you can 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 think about at, or applications of that. But I, I just wanted to so you can think about it. What's the relevance of th this kind of things? But uh, one idea that I wanted to share is that uh, um, one of the applications that you can use this model for is that since it can um, it can represent the activity of a network because uh, the G and GI act like represent the activity of a network. So if you have some properties and some regime for the network, you could use a low dimensional model to uh, to give you the dynamics of the network. So if you assume some 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 things on the network, then you can uh, you can resume you can project the properties of the network into a single low dimensional model. All right, so that's it. Now, uh, if you want to do a project, uh, here are some ideas. Uh, you can so periodic plus noise plus uh, so it's SDE the associate associated uh, PDEs, it's for Kirk-Planck equation, uh, you can write down this thing, it's interesting, That's, that can be a project. Uh, you can formalize the, because uh, it's kind of random work associated to a dynamical system, we can formalize, formalize it more uh, with respect to, so we can study what, what's, the, what's the, the statistical properties of this, uh, of this dynamical system. So 
uh, you can try to formalize a little bit more that. Uh, this last thing with the slow fast analysis, uh, any other idea related with these slides and this talk, you can do it. Uh, and also there are some computations that I didn't do, so this is a requirement, any project uh, related with this talk of today, uh, you have to do the, the, the computation that I didn't do. All right, so uh, with that, uh, I say thank you for your attention and uh, Yes, so if you have any uh, question, you, you can go uh, ahead and uh, otherwise I say you bye-bye. Uh,